uh, th these things right here, and uh, I wanted to go ahead and show you guys. So this is uh, Mark Kern. He was one of the uh, the people in charge of uh, making Vanilla Wow. He was a producer, I think, for it, and uh, not necessarily dev, but he was involved with the uh, the production of the game. And uh, he was talking a little bit about uh, Vanilla Wow the other day, and we're going to take a look at what he said. Emerald Dream original plan. Died in Wow original. When you died in Wow originally. You weren't supposed to be a ghost and run back to your body or anything. You were supposed to go to the Emerald Dream. And you were supposed to meet NPCs who had died in the lore of Warcraft. And they would give you quests that you could only do in the Emerald Dreaming. And you were supposed to be able to either find your way back. You could go back and find a spirit guide to bring you back. Fuck? Or you could stay there and complete quests there. When you what the fuck? That's actually insane. Makes you wish they had another year to work on the game. I mean, like, who knows? That is fucking incredible. Died though. in the like. I, I am amazed. That's such a good idea. I mean, obviously, like, I could see that being bad, but you know, they actually. I feel like this has got to be true because they even had a few quests that you could only pick up whenever you're dead, right? For the the key for uh, BRD and shit. Holy shit, man. That's actually fucking insane. Like, the internal ends? I don't even know. Yeah, they, they should make a classic expansion. I mean, obviously, that's what seems like the best idea, right? Good idea. doesn't make sense. Emerald Dream isn't Realm of the Dead. Well, it, it's not... Okay, well, let's be honest. It, this is not the... It doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but I still like the idea a lot. And uh, it is unfortunate that they didn't go with this, because it does sound really fucking cool. Breaks the game a lot, but cool, I guess? Yeah. Well, I mean, this is like... It wouldn't have broken the game because the game would have been designed around this. Okay, transmog and MMOs. This is going to be good. Yeah, cosmetic progression. Okay. This was back True. when... You got to remember we were playing True. EQ, right? And one of the coolest things about EverQuest... This is, there was no transmog. There was no nothing. So if you yep. saw someone in, say, Rubicite armor... You knew they were badass. I don't know what that is, but... You could okay. only get that if you were really, really hardcore. That's right. And farmed it. And we wanted to give you sort of like more options for visuals as you progressed through the world. And that's something I miss from MMO design. Now that you can transmog everything and cosmetics is such a big money maker, yeah. you really don't have that anymore. See how I said it's just a big money maker? Like, that, that's really what the cosmetics are. It's not about a progression, it's about making money. Because almost every single fucking game developer nowadays sells cosmetics. Uh, it's unfortunate, but that's the reality of it. Uh, I'm glad to see Mark... It's sad to see, like, all these old WoW devs that think the exact same way that a lot of us do, and now they don't work on the game. Alright, WoW expansion progression based on the principles of you always have to stay true to what made classic wow classic wow okay and if you do that i think that that's the way i'd like to see expansions done and then there's precedence for this i think runescape did something similar eventually they got their own content path you know for the classic version of runescape and that's what i'd like to see happen with wow if you just follow the expansion packs you're going to end up right where you started and based on the principles of you always have to stay true. Wow. Uh. Wow. Holy shit. Uh, so that means that he actually wants more content after Nax. Uh, I wonder if he's worried, though, uh, about, like, I don't know, like, I, I'd be curious to hear what his response would be whenever I said, you know, like, how I feel. I'm just worried about Blizzard messing it up. Uh, I wonder what he would say about that. In the older versions of these games, might might cause a little revival. Why not? Why not bring back MMOs with a little more challenge where you actually feel like you, you live in this world, that you're not just dashing through it? Incidentally, that's another reason why we didn't do free flight. Not only was it Fuck yeah. technically challenging, but we Fuck didn't yeah. want to ruin the sense of world. We thought that in EQ, when you started porting around with druids and stuff, that it was getting way too it shrunk the world it made it feel inconsequential and you just blew through these zones and you didn't have the sense of world we wanted you to walk through the world to get a feeling that you're actually in it 
Now, maybe that's not true anymore. Maybe people just want instant gratification, but I like to think that there's still a lot of people that want this slower pace experience. Am I gonna die? This is gonna be embarrassing. All right. There are. I would say even there are more people that want the slower paced experience than want the fast paced experience. How do I know that? Is the people that want the fast paced experience just quit the game because they don't care. Like they, they, they get into it. They're not invested. It's just like, okay, I did the thing that really, that happened really fast and now I'm done. So, okay, that's nice. And I uh, just, yeah, I mean, that's what it is. The vote time? Well, I mean, it's not really something you can really vote on because it's so much more nuanced than that. But in general, what he's saying is completely fucking true. Like, the, the world does feel smaller without flying. Because whenever you fly everywhere, you don't need to worry about, like, let's say, like, the Fell Reaver is a good example of this. And I think, actually, the way that you start off in a Hellfire Peninsula, for example, in Outland, and you see the Fell Reaver, and you're like, fuck. And then you finally get up to max level, and maybe you can fly around in some zones. I think being able to fly in some zones is okay. Flying everywhere, probably not. So whenever you can fly over to the Fell Reaver, over like the Pit Lord Commander, I think that there's a certain amount of like you know mastery that somebody feels once they're able to <coughs> over <coughs> overcome a certain challenge like that. Just one second, let me take a drink. Excuse me, guys. I I apologize for that. Mark Kern on layering. Wait, what is this your original? We were originally shooting for, I think Alan Adham, uh, lead designer okay. for the game when we were in the early stages, as well as yeah. founder of Blizzard, one of the founders Ooh. of Blizzard. He wanted That's servers with only like 500 people on them, really tiny. And because he wanted that sort of social neighborhood-like effect where wow. you run by people and you recognize their name, and you run by them again, you recognize their name again, and then maybe you'll actually go say hello. And if you are fewer people, we were originally... Sh what? Like... What What happened? Like, does Alan Adham still work at Blizzard? Um, Blizzard. Let's see, does he still work there? After leaving the company, he returned to Blizzard in 2016. Okay, so now he's back. His favorite game of all time is EverQuest. Bro, like, can you work on WoW again? Like, have you seen LFR, dude? Have you seen what they've done to the fucking game? Well, come on, man, come back. <laughs> When he's coming, no, man, the entire vanilla, yeah, they did this whole thing, man. Like, he went on mobile, look, dude, I, mobile games are fine. I don't hate mobile games. I think mobile games are great, but I don't think that mobile games should come at the expense of a true PC, full-fledged MMO experience. And that's what I think a lot of us here want. So, yeah, that, that's what I want to fucking see. I hate mobile games. I don't really even give a shit, man. Predicts the success of Classic WoW. And you have the retail players who want a very different experience. And I think it's just as valid to say, hey, this is a great MMO too. Okay. If you want, to, if you like retail, play retail. Mm -hmm. But I said you've lost about four or five million players who really miss this. Leaked? And grew up with this. Wow. And it was important. And I said, I think what will happen is if you bundle it with the subscription, don't charge anything extra for it, no. you're going to bring people back that will play both. You'll bring people back like me who miss the old WoW, yeah. and they're going to come for the nostalgia, and they're going to stay because they're going to, they're going to, it's, it's not easy to get through this content. Yeah. They're going to stay a while, and if you keep supporting it, then I think that you'll be able to bring back a couple million to WoW. I said, you know, at least one million, maybe two million, and that's more than enough to justify the existence of it. But I said, you know what? They're going to stick around because what they'll do is they'll play. And you have the retail player. What I really like about this is that a lot of these like classic WoW guys, like him and like Kevin Jordan and a lot of these other people, 
they're just really, you know, modest, soft-spoken, soft spoken neckbeards. Right? I mean, that's basically what they are. They're just elite neckbeards. Like, instead of being, you know, a level 28 neckbeard like us, you know, they're like level 40 neckbeards. And they just, they just know what to do. And I, it's crazy just to hear the devs just say, literally, this is exactly what everybody's been saying. This is exactly what everybody's wanted. It's not even like, oh, kind of like that, or I'm, you know, misrepresenting what they're saying. No, they're literally saying that exact thing. And I, the old gods, more like the old devs. Yeah, business suit neckbeards. I, I just, I, I'm, I, I'm amazed. You know, Blizzard actually told you guys that they lost the code for the original Oops. World of Warcraft. Well, that's that's partially true. What was missing was not so much the code, but the data, like all the spawn data and everything else. And so Nostalrius was really helpful in helping Blizzard understand how to patch some of the holes in that data that's actually pretty and smart get back what was lost and then i think what happened was the, the classic wow team actually found another way to reconstruct the data that was even better and through the hard work of all these people holy they were shit. able to to replicate this you know blizzard actually told you guys wow okay that's exactly what we've been yeah I, i'm not surprised honestly i'm really not mark kern on layering Okay, this is going to be good. There's a few more of these, like two or three more. I can see why they went with a layered approach here, because can you imagine trying to get these spawns? It would be impossible. There's no way it would. you could do it. There's no way. If they weren't layered? Like, it's bad enough as yeah. it is, right? Uh, come on. Give me something. See, now he's getting pissed. So, But exactly. I, don't, I hope they don't keep it for, for full launch, because I think a layered approach divides the community up and you really want the social aspect for world of warcraft the original design goal for wow was to be a intensely social game at the same time we wanted to give you a path to solo ability so you didn't feel stuck and so we made most of the quests and most of the the leveling aspects of the world not group oriented and then for the harder core players we would build in difficult quests that required a group. Did I get them? <laughs> yeah, ex exactly. Like, so developing PvP was um, something that we wanted to do from the beginning. What a mistake. But we were very unsure how to handle balance in PvE versus PvP. Some things never change. And that's something any MMO has to contend with. Anything that has a PvE version and a PvP version... It's not just twice as hard to do, it's about 10 times harder to do. Yep. Because unless you have completely different skills and abilities, it's very bit, very difficult to match up. And I'd like to say we knew what we were doing for that, but we really didn't. And we, PvP we was so unfun during the last year of WoW development that we decided to hold it back to post-launch. And that was a really good decision. Damn. Imagine that. An element of the game being unfun, so Blizzard decides to hold back releasing it. It should have always been World PvP. For I think BGs are okay. I I do. I I don't think I think random BGs are actually probably good, but I think there is a very strong argument to be made that BGs maybe should have never existed. Something interesting about quest text. Everybody keeps some um, start summons, guys. I'll start show summons. you when it comes up later, and I'll mention it again. But originally, quest text used to instantly appear during early development of the game. Right. Well, now there's an option for and that. And we had tons of quests in the game, but our own teams were giving us feedback that there was not enough lore or story. 
And we're like, what do you mean? We have tons of quests and we've written all this lore. Right. How can you say there's no story? So we made a change. Uh, no, I'm not going to group. Because I can't. I can't be a mm. good group mate while I'm telling wild stories. Look at that. And so we made a small change. We, instead of bringing the text up immediately, we teletyped it. So it would, and you can see this in classic WoW, it will actually just start drawing across the screen. And that, something interesting about quest text. I, people are asking me, how is WoW Classic going to survive modern times? And I think it's going to survive modern times by not dicking around too much with it, honestly. Warts and all. Like, I think... Hey! Um, hey, look at that! I think you can. You have to make changes, but you're going to have to have a guiding set of philosophies that you never... Because if you start making change after change, you just become retail WoW after a while. If you just go down the regular expansion set, you become retail WoW after a while. And that defeats the whole purpose of sort of like taking the design philosophies a slice in time at the beginning and carrying them forward. So, so what were those design philosophies? Um, they were about, I, you know, having a meaningful ex uh, experience. He just knows. Leveling, having a sense of achievement. I we mean, wanted shorter gameplay sessions. To us back then, that meant only you know, five hours. You want to feel like you were accomplished in an hour. Now people want to feel accomplished in the 15 minutes they have to log on. People are asking me. I, it, it is, this is crazy. Like, I, I literally just, they just say, like, he just says what it is. You started this. Like, no, I mean, like, why no graphics updates? Because the game, is, I think that there's a certain amount of nostalgia that appeals to people. I mean, this is the way I feel, right? A certain amount of nostalgia that appeals to people. And whenever you start making graphical changes, uh, then you sort of kind of diverge from people's original memories of the game. And so they won't be attached to it in the same way. Uh, if you, I mean, if you want, like, a real answer of why, I mean, that's why I would say. Uh, everybody, meet up. I want everybody to meet up, actually, in front of, uh, in front of Jaina's castle. Uh, in front of Jaina's area. We want to get everybody there. So uh, head over there, guys, and uh, we need to make a second, third, fourth, and fifth group. So every single person, if you are watching this stream right now, and you have the beta, and you are Alliance, you are obligated to come to Theramore and help us kill this boss. Okay? This is a legal requirement. I'm sorry, but that's just the truth. Let's go. Everybody get the fuck over here. Move the video. Yeah, I have one more that I'm going to watch. Then we're going to, uh, we're going to start this up, okay? Collectible cards. I really wanted a collectible card game mini game in World of Warcraft. I wanted you to be able to, because we were playing a lot of CCGs in our off time, Magic the Gathering, Legend of the Five Rings. Hey. And I wanted one in game hey. as a mini game. And the idea was you could play it anywhere. You could sit down a campfire out there or whip out a deck of cards and start playing with somebody else. And you'd get like a little like menu Gwent screen or something. and put cards down. This was hard to imagine back then because yeah. The Witcher 3 hadn't happened. Oh. Gwent hadn't happened. Hey, there and you nobody go. understood what the benefit of this would be. I wanted you to loot cards from mobs out in the world to fill your deck. And when you got into the inn, it's like the dark if I fair. sat down at one of these tables across from somebody else, the and when we played um, a round of this card game, it would be ranked. So the inns would be places you would go to get ranked play. Same with so boats, like gyms boat, and Pokemon. Uh, boat rides were meant to be pretty long. I really wanted a... I just... It's just, it's crazy, man. I, I get so high. I, I'm, I'm so, the guy, I mean, like, these guys are, I mean, they're fucking geniuses. Like, they just, they just, they just know. Like, I, they, they just fucking know what to do. And the fact that these guys, these elite neckbeards from the early 2000s, we're able to come together and create this game. The, like, I, I just, I, it's just incredible to believe, man. Did he get fired or did he leave? I, I don't know what the details are, honestly. Uh, I, I don't, I don't know, like, what his relationship with Blizzard is. I, I think that it's not, like, particularly good, but who the fuck knows? He left? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't want to get into, like, too much details. I want to actually watch some more of this because uh, it, it's really interesting to me. I, I'd like to actually talk to, like, 
like I, I'd like to see more of this information and uh, figure it out. He started his own company. Was his long term plan? Well, that's good, but um, I, I don't know. It's just it's crazy for me to see like the things that these guys are saying and have those things that they're saying be so closely uh, similar to the things that everybody has been saying and thinking about the game for years. And it's just really great for me to see. Uh, invite him on the stream. You know what? Maybe one of these days I will. Uh, he follows me on Twitter. I'll send him a DM today and uh, we'll see what happens. How about that? Yeah, people like to see that. Yeah, I mean, why not? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll work it out. And uh, you know what? There's probably a few other like classic WoW devs, and I'll talk to them too. And I'll have to structure out some actual questions and uh, make sure that we don't focus on you know talking about how shitty the current game is or whatever, but just like kind of proponents and uh, you know positive things about classic. Maybe I might even invite uh, you know Asfan and or McConnell on to uh, ask questions too. Actually, that'd be really fucking cool. Yeah, I'd be down for that. Watch the whole, the, the whole stream. Well, I can't watch the whole thing, but uh, obviously I, I want to see more of it. I do. And so if people have more clips to show me of uh, what he was talking about, and, like different things that he said, uh, you can send them to me. Uh, or like say send them to my mods, and then they'll send them to me, and uh, I'll look at them later. 